You're watching Nerdocity. Yo, what up, Nerdocity? This is your host, Tiger Eye Cosplay, coming at you. And today, for today's episode, is going to be the top list of Nerdocity. That's where we're coming back with a top 10 list of the top 10 cartoon show females. There's not a lot of females that you can really relate to in cartoons. They're mostly just kind of like the same trope, but I think these top 10 characters that I'm gonna show for you today and some of my honorable mentions are very amazing when it comes to cartoon show females, where you can relate to them, where you can look up to them, and where you can just be in awe of their stark awesomeness and um, how, how amazingly powerful they are. So these are my top 10. Guys, know that we gotta look at the rules, but instead of me writing them out, I think I'm just gonna say them here. For one, these are all my opinions. So guys, don't get by her if you think that one of these characters are better than the other. I put them in my list, in my order, of the ones that I think are the most badass, the most powerful, the um, biggest character arc. So some of these, they're just badass at the, at the beginning, and they don't really change too much. And also, how near and dear they are to my heart, when I watched them, and how I, and if I've gone back and rewatched things, and also how much they relate to me, and um, the kind of role model they can set for women and little kids, little girl kids now. So yeah, let's get right into it with number 10, which is Nicole Watterson from The Amazing World of Gumball. The Amazing World of Gumball is an amazing cartoon. It's um, dark, it's funny, it's uh, really real and relatable, and also pretty um, intelligent when it gets to the times. I mean, obviously they kind of mask that with the um, different cartoon style and how kiddish it looks, but honestly speaking, I think it's for more a more mature audience than what the cartoon style lets on to. But Nicole Watterson is Gumball and Darwin and Anais's mother and Richard's wife. And she is just so badass and she's just amazing. You get to see, you get to see how much of a great mother she is, how she cares for her children, how she's able to do things without the constraints of being a woman. Like she is just able to go and get ish done. She is a boss at, yeah, you get what I'm saying. But she she does get the flack come back from being um, a woman, like in the one episode where she says that women have it the hardest, where she has to go through not having a promotion even though she worked at the company for like 10 years, never had a promotion, never had employee of the month even though she carries the, the place on her back. She was able to save her kids from danger in several episodes, but she is just an amazing woman and I think that she is just awesome to relate to and to be, and to look up to. But because she's number 10 on this list is because she's not seen very much in the series and she doesn't have a huge character arc she's just badass from the beginning um which is amazing but i think we need something more substantial for our top 10 list mr miyagi no it was the school of life I have raised three kids and one husband. Which brings me to number nine, which is Beatrice from Over the Garden Wall. Now you know me, I love Over the Garden Wall. Like, I will gush about it all day. It was an amazing cartoon. You've already heard me speak about it many times, so I'm not gonna go over it again. But Beatrice is the bluebird in the series, later turns back into a human at the end of the series. Spoiler alert, she was cursed because she threw a rock at a bluebird and then had to figure out a way to get back. So the only way that she could get back to a human was to get the, uh, the scissors from the uh, Adelaide, who is awful, by the way. But her character starts from being um, uh, rash, uh, hot-headed individual teenage girl who just wants to trick these two innocent kids into 
um, being indentured servers, uh, s servants to Adelaide so that she can get her um, humanity back. And later on, we realized that she cursed her whole family, so this is why she wanted to do it. But then she has a change of heart where she wants to save War and Greg and then almost gives up her whole humanity and everything just to save these two until she finally gets back, gets to release her and her family from the curse later on. But she is so amazing because she she has like this huge character arc in only 10 episodes and she's just super awesome. She's super snarky. She's just crass. Like she doesn't follow the same tropes as women do because she's viewed as a bluebird as first so she doesn't really exactly have to stick within within the lines of being a woman but then later on when we realize that she was human we're just like man this woman's a also she doesn't care what we're or greg thinks about them she she will do anything to get her ish done and it's just so she's just so cool and the reason why she's number nine is because it's only 10 episodes long so we have that that arc that we have to get through in 10 episodes plus she's not in every single one of the episodes and i think if maybe if this series was longer we could see more of her amazingness later but she is a normal character apart from the fact that she was cursed so there's not much to go off of here which is why she's number nine we need money you're scamming him I was thinking more like flat out stealing from him. What? No way. Why not? We already stole a horse. Hey guys. No, we didn't. Fred's a talking horse. He can do whatever he wants. I want to steal. But we go on to number eight, which is get Gwen Tennyson from the Ben 10 series. Now I started Ben 10 with the little kids, Ben and Gwen, where she was just, she was just catty. Like they like to make sisters or cousin girl cousins be because everybody wants to root for the male protagonist and everybody and and they just want to make her out to be a bad guy but she did have her rede redeeming moments in the older cartoon but when they changed ben 10 and gwen and uh kevin into teenage adults she turned out to be really badass like she had a lot of characteristics that were amazing she got her ish done she was super smart and like we need more role models that are super smart but also also can kick ass because we need girls to know that they can be smart and amazing at the same time you know what i mean like it, she was just great she had like those power moves and it was just awesome and i loved her as a character like she was just great and i think kevin and her were so cute man right but she still had her moments where she was catty as a teenager as girls tend to do and well, Gwen, uh, Ben also had his moments as well of being a snot-nosed teenager or whatever. They all have their moments, but they all get over it as well. And we had a nice character arc and they could fight crime and it was amazing. I put her at eight at the list because I'm not a huge fan of Ben 10. I like it, but it's not my, it's not like my top cartoon or whatnot. And I think that I didn't watch enough to be completely enamored by her change and personality and all that character arc and whatnot but still amazing plus she's not as badass as the people we're gonna get to later one day you'll learn to make a new body any kind you like listen to me i am not going i love having powers but i like my life better I like fighting monsters and saving the world. Which brings me to number seven, which is Aunt May from the Spectacular Spider-Man series with Drake Bell. I think it was Amazing Spider-Man. There's so many different adjectives for Spider-Man nowadays. Like it's just <laughs> insane. So I don't, I can't really keep them all in track. But it was um, the one with Drake Bell as Spider-Man. But Aunt May, she was old. She was an old woman, but she was badass. Like she could kick ass. Like she was doing Pilates and like dancing, and she could fight. I mean, the woman was on tear. Like she was up there man like i would have been afraid to get on her bad side when she was younger because she could still kick ass right now she would have been able to like throw down when she was younger like oh i have never ever wanted to be someone's friend so bad as when i met old aunt may and like 
I don't know why people want to keep on making Aunt May younger and younger and younger. I mean, she was badass when she was old. Like, all you gotta do is like show her badass side. I mean, in, in um, the Spider-Verse movie, she was badass. She was old, but she was badass. Like, you don't have to take away her oldness. Like, you don't have to take away her wiseness to make her cool and to make her relatable to, to women and make her cool. Like, you don't need to make her 40 years old. Put her, put her at 70, but make her kick ass like all these other things do. Like, she was just amazing. But you didn't really get any character arc with her in these things because you know she's just a shy character but the fact that she did that she took care of her body and she was not the characteristic old woman that you always see in in shows like they showed her as what she truly was in the heart like she's just amazing i love aunt may and the fact that you could make a side character so amazing and so awesome plus be so old and wise and super awesome like hands down best aunt may ever like she was great like you need to make they need to make more animes like that especially in the live action versions like that would be so amazing but that's why she's at number seven was because she's only a side character you just saved my life and i don't even know what to call you scarlet spider no your real name i uh i don't have one i can never take off my mask you won't like what you see oh don't be silly All I see is a good man. How about we call you Ben? Yes, I think that fits. But that brings me to number six, which is Daria from Daria. Now, I love Daria. You've heard me talk about her before and stuff like that, so I'm not gonna get too much into it, but Daria is that snarky, cynical, teenage person that doesn't give two Fs about what you think, and she ain't about to let you get on her bad side. Like, she is not about for you to, like, come at her. Like, she, she's like, come at me. I'll freaking tear you up with my words, and it'll be fine, and, every, and you'll cry, and then you'll never mess with me again, so come at me. Like, try me. She wants a hoe to try her and you don't want to try her and which is amazing because we didn't show little kid like girls that you you can be that person without being like like awful because she made it good like she was good at it she was so smart but she was so snarky and she used it to her advantage man she got things and, and plus she was so real like the whole character series and the whole arc and everything her arc was amazing like you got to see her go through things that girls nowadays still go through like it's so relatable and to have a character so relatable yet so like you could look up to and feel like she was so powerful within herself but still able to like have like hubris and and uh arrogantness and and having and being able to change within herself and feeling that way and she's not just the character trope they all put her to be as a snarky but she still feels and she has emotions and it was just so amazing to see someone so dynamic like that but she's number six because, like, she still had those times where you're just like, okay, listen, you don't have to be that bad. Like, there are some times where you're pushing your trope a little too far on your own time. Like, she knew she was pushing her trope a little too far when I was just like, come on now. You don't have to be mean like this. And there were times where I'm just like, girl, you can't do that. So, but there, it, it's things with that, like, all the time. But she... She's near and dear to my heart, and I love her so much, but that's why she's at number six. Mom's resentful that she has to work so hard, which obscures her guilt about actually wanting to work so hard. Dad's guilty about being less driven than Mom, but thinks it's wrong to feel that way, so he hides behind a smokescreen of cluelessness. Quinn wears superficiality like a suit of armor, because she's afraid of looking inside and finding absolutely nothing. And I'm so defended that I actively work to make people dislike me, so I won't feel bad when they do because number five had to be my girl Raven. I think she, she's only relevant in the Teen Titans series, not the Teen Titans Go, F that crap. Um, and none of the other Ravens, just the Raven and Teen Titans, the old one where we all loved and we wanted to come back, but then they gave us that, that crap Teen Titans Go. Man alive, why did they gotta do that ish? But she was amazing in that, and the fact that it got canceled too, too, too soon was awful because we didn't get her full character arc, and we didn't get to see her more with Beast Boy and, and, and grow more as a person, which is why she's at five, is because we didn't see that full growth that we had. Y'all know Teen Titans, so I'm not going to get into it. But she is so powerful and so amazing. She was one of the most powerful um, superhero women that I've ever seen in TV shows or anything because she, like, they just 
did not hold any stops with her. Like, she was just amazing, badass. Like, it was awesome. Like, she could she could get anybody to do her bidding because she knew that she was a bomb, like a, that she was, she knew that she could, that she could intimidate people and she used it to her advantage. She intimidated the heck out of people and she was gonna use that ish. And the, the fact that she was so powerful made it so amazing and, and that she didn't care what people thought. Like you always see tropes where, where girls care what people think and it's just bad because they want to please everyone. She didn't care about that ish. She didn't care about that ish at all. Like she was just like, y'all don't talk to me. I want to be alone. I don't care. I like you guys more or less. But if y'all F with me, y'all going to get killed. And they were like, okay, we understand because you probably kick all of our butts with your eyes closed. And that's why I love her so much. Oof, she's so great. But we didn't get to see that full full growth, which is why she's at five. Yo, Raven, try one. They're loaded with soybeany goodness. I respect that you don't eat meat. Please respect that I don't eat fake meat. Told you we'd win you a prize. <laughs> a giant chicken. I must be the luckiest girl in the world. And who beat her out? Number four, Totally Spies. Now you're gonna tell me Totally Spies is three girls, but I'm like, you get one spy, you get them all, okay? You can't just be like Alex or Sam or Clover. You can't just have one and not expect the other. They're just they're like a posse. If, if you talk about the mean girls, you're not, you're not just gonna be like the mean girls. Or maybe you would. I don't know. That was a bad example. Huh. Uh, but like, you can't have one totally spy without the other two. So they're all like together and they all have that like the three bits that you gotta like, that you gotta think about and stuff. Like they, they just bring the ish together. Like we love this best friend group. We love this best friend group. They were amazing. They would kick ass. They didn't have any superpowers, but they could kick your ass real quick because it was spies and they were teenagers. They juggled teenage life plus their work life and they made it work and it was amazing. And oh my gosh, the show was so good. I've been rewatching it and it's still amazing even now at 21 years old. Like I love that ish. Like Sam, she's my girl because she was smart. She was smart, but she had fashion sense. Like she was smart, but nobody called her a nerd or nothing like her friends did because they were like, girl, you gotta turn down your nerdiness just a little bit, but you wouldn't see it on the outside because she looked good. And then Clover, man, she owned her ish. She owned the fact that she was a fashionista. She owned the ish that she was like, mm, I can't do that because my nails will get done. But she did it too. She would be like, ah, oh, damn, this is this is awful because I can't be doing this with my nails and stuff, but I'm still gonna get it done. And I'm gonna look good, good while doing it. And she owned that ish. And then, and then Alex, she was just like, yo, I'm a tomboy and I'm gonna own that ish too. I'm gonna throw down, I'm gonna look good while doing it. I'm gonna kick your ass. I'm gonna kick your ass. Everybody gets an ass kicking over here because I'm gonna do soccer, I'm gonna do sports, I'm gonna do this ish and I'm gonna look good while doing it. Like she was ready to throw down. And all of them together, man, you never seen a girl group so good like they would have kicked y'all asses with their eyes closed and y'all don't even know what hit you because they come out of nowhere they open a can of whoop funny whoop ass right on your ass like you open a can of whoop which is funny because their organization is whoop so never mind but they were amazing and you got to see their whole character arc and how they how they grew as a as a group and how they dealt with each other when they were living with each other but it was so amazing i love them so much and like i, I just i have to put them at four because the other three are, are are closer to my heart than these girls but man if you ever wanted to give your kid like your little kid someone to look up to give them the freaking totally spies because they were amazing man and you could you could spend all that time watching that ish man i loved it But I gotta go to the next one, which is number three, is Velma from Scooby-Doo. Velma was my girl, man. Like, you never saw, uh, like, she was smart it, th 
throughout the whole dang thing. And, and like, I'm partial to the old, old version of Scooby-Doo because, like, that's what I grew up on. And you're like, how old are you? Like, I know you're 21, so you didn't grow up on the ish. I did grow up on the ish because my parents are old souls and they bought the old ish. They always showed me the old ish, so I know all the old stuff and all the old cartoons. And everybody's like, did you see this new one? And I'm like, nah, bro, I only see old ones. Why didn't you see the old ones so we could talk about that ish? But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling. But Velma, she was amazing. She's my girl. I love her so much. She's a detective. She She's smart as heck. And, and she's got a kick-ass turtleneck. She was just amazing, man. And, like, in, in the new Wolf series, she gets more snarky and cynical. And I just love it because her cutting, because her cutting edge, uh, uh, quips. Oh, man, they hit home because she got that smart to back it up. So, like, they're going to pierce you like an arrow through the, through the head. Like, she comes out with these with these uh, quips so quick, too. Like, it's just like, dang. Oh, it was good. Like, you got that good-ish right there, girl. Like, you did good. And she's close. She's she's near and dear to my heart. I would have put her at number one. But no, the, the one through three was so hard to figure out who I wanted to be one through the three. I was going to put her at, at, at three, but, but um... She's just not as dynamic as the as the next. I was gonna put her at one, but she's not as dynamic as the two that I put at one and two. But I love her so much, and she did have a nice character arc through the whole thing. I just love her, and that's why I put her at three because she's my. Ooh, she's my girl. Or just another Friday night. I'm by myself as usual, and you know what? That's okay. What's so bad about sitting in your room alone on a Friday night? Welcome in the castle. Go now, or abandon all hope of seeing the sun again. You stop that. But we go to number two, which is Chitara from the Thundercats 2011 series, because that's the only series that I thought saw for Thundercats. I tried watching the older Thundercats, but I haven't gotten around to it amazingly yet. Yeah, but she had an amazing character story in the 2011 version. Um, and it was just so deep, and it was so amazing, and I love seeing a girl with a nice head on her shoulders. Bruh, like, you look up to Chitara, and she's just great and amazing, and I love it. Um, she's super fast, like, she's, she's got all the ish, and she was, she, she could throw down with the Thundercats, like, nobody's business, like, she had all her ish, all her, all her ducks in a row, like, she could throw down, she was badass with that staff, too, man, she was good, she used her speed to her advantage, she knew how to throw down, and she had incredible patience, like, her character arc, from when she was a kid to when she was older, was just amazing, and I wish they never canceled this show, because it could have been something so good, but the fact that people didn't really watch it was why they canceled it, I'm so upset, because they just ended on a cliffhanger, but it's an amazing show, you should watch it still, but Chitara is just so amazing and I want to cosplay her so bad but she's so good and I love her so much she's my girl but uh yeah her character arc was just amazing and she's so near and dear to my heart I love her so much I feel I've contributed to it by not being clearer with my feelings no it's pretty clear you made your choice you're right I did choose years ago of all the flowers you picked the day Astrid each petal is said to have trapped a day of life within it. It gave me the strength to endure, to make it one more day. This is the heart of that very same flower. I've kept it all these years in memory of your kindness. Which reminds me, I never had a chance to thank you. But before we get on to number one, I'm gonna show y'all some honorable mentions. Here they are, right now. I'm so glad we added you to the group. Hi, I'm Daria. Go to hell. It won't work. My face is too expressive. You're right. You're right. I'm gonna do it. That's it. Break free, Penny. Hey, here we go. I'm gonna be myself. <gasps> what the what? She go. Your makeup actually works in this light. What? You got past all the booby traps? Not all. Little help. <laughs> Connie! Steven? What are you doing out here? Let's get on to the 
the one that you have been waiting for. Number one is Katara from Avatar The Last Airbender. Ooh, Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh, Avatar The Last Airbender was such an amazing show. Man, like it kicked butt. And I, ah, I could not say enough. And y'all know Avatar The Last Airbender. If you haven't, you gotta, where have you been? Go watch that ish because it's amazing. But Katara, Hmm, you'll see her from, from, from episode one all the way to the end, and her character arc is so dynamic and so amazing. She goes from this green, um, not knowing much, kind of with her element, and, and just kind of like, not, she's, she's awesome, but she's just like, you gotta tone it down a bit, into some badass character that was a master at waterbending, could throw down with the rest of them. She was so powerful and she's had such a good heart and she was so for peace and 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 love and, and she was just all for her friends and she got through so amazing some amazing ish like she is a bad ass woman if you ever ever had one to look up to it was katara like you want to show your kids someone to look up to katara she had that Oh, she was so good. And I can't even say enough about her. She had all the good qualities. Her character arc was so dynamic. Oh my gosh. I you'd have me like talking for days and, and this and this video would be so long if I had all if I had all the time in the world just to tell you how amazing Katara is. I was gonna it's she's just she's just so amazing. And like being being me being a mixed person and seeing someone on a screen that was my same skin tone and like seemed to come from the same background and whatnot like it was just so relatable and so amazing to see someone so powerful and dynamic to, to be able to look up to i love her so so much and that's why she's number one because she has the most dynamic character arc and most badassness of all these women but all these women are amazing praise the for women woo -woo. and that is it thank you guys so much for watching this episode has been so amazing for me because we had to get come on we had to we had to show us some love right show us some girls some love if you like this video please share it show the girls some love we want to get that ish out there um if you want to tell me what you think below comment below if you if you uh, agree with my list or you think you should change it in any way whatsoever just comment below tell me it and like it like this video so I know that you guys want more of it and, and like you like what I'm doing here. And make sure you share as much as humanly possible. We want to get this out there so that we, so show all the women some love, okay? And uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. You've been watching Nerdocity and I will see you next time.